Hi, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the unlimited home 5G premium package from the RAIN network. This package is advertised on their website and you may have seen my earlier video on the 5G standard option. If you have not seen that video, you're welcome to go and see it. It's called RAIN 5G Speed Test, Troubleshooting with Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Right, so in this video, I'm now going to do a review of the Unlimited Home Premium. I have now used this for more than a week. I have also used the Unlimited Home Standard for now about a month. Right, so the first thing you can see is the price. There is a difference of 300 Rand at the time of creating this video, which is in the middle of May. They both use the same router. Both the 5G products run on this router. This is the N5368X CPE by Huawei. So you might be wondering, what is the difference between these two products? Well, the first difference is obviously the speed. If you look at the average speed, you can see it's got there 200 megabits per second, while here on the smaller package is 30 megabits per second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some real life tests. All right, so first things first, I'd just like to demonstrate the speed test. This is my previous speed test. I have done a few speed tests. Right, so you can see the speed test there, very good, 292 with an upload rate of 51. You can see there's a considerable difference between the upload and the download rate. Obviously, most people are downloading, streaming and things like that is still downloading. And if you're somebody who needs to upload a lot, then you would have to consider if it's still viable with the lower upload rate, although 51 is still a good upload rate. Now, if I show you my past results, it's not always above 200 megabits per second. You can see there, I did one was 192, then there was a good one here, 281. I don't worry about this one of 10. Then there was 166, 174, 226. So you can see that it definitely fluctuates and it's not consistent, which means that during the day, you might find that it's 209, it might be 174, and also depends where you are. So this one here of 292 is actually the best speed test that I've ever had. It just so happened to have happened while I was doing this video. Now I'm gonna quickly do the speed test via Rain's own network. So I go to speed.rain.co.za and I start the test. Now, if you're wondering why I did both these speed tests, speed test via RAIN and speed test via UCLA, is for this reason. Now, if you look here, this is 276. Now, if you look on the UCLA, it's quite similar. As I said, it does fluctuate moment to moment, but you can see that I'm at the maximum speed of my router, meaning that the router is installed on my roof, and that is pretty much the best or around the best rate that I've received, even doing this test several times. I did get over 300, but for the most part, in my area where I'm in, in Gauteng, I can't get more than about 330 megabits per second. I'm mostly in the 220 to 280 range. So why I did this test is this is the capability of the router in terms of the way it's been set up in terms of the link to the nearby base station. The UCLA test is how much rain is allowing my particular SIM card to operate at or my router to operate at. My port on the rain network or what we call a socket, my IP address is allowed to operate at that maximum because I'm paying the premium package price. But if you were on the home standard option, you will see that you won't be able to get this high uh, download rate, even though you might do your download speed on the RAIN network, you might say 276, but when you do the UCLA test, you'll see that it's not. Now, I'll just show you what I mean now. If you look at my results, there it's got 192, 281, 160, but uh, about a week ago, when I was still on the standard package, there you can see my speed test, 33, 32, 33, 36, 34, 33. So you can see that what is happening is rain is saying all right even though you've got the capability to get to this download rate we're going to cap your download and upload rates to the package of the 30 megabits per second so that's the difference so if you do do the speed test and you're wondering how come the rain speed test gives you much higher rate while the ukla test is much uh, slower it's because of the package you're on right now on this top end package can you do what they advertised 
They said full HD video streaming, multiple HD streams, average network download speeds over 200 megabits per second. Now I had the unlimited 5G standard and I did get the speeds of 30 megabits per second and I did find they were reliable. However, the YouTube streaming and the Netflix, I, didn't, I wouldn't say I always got the 720. You will see the video, you'll see that uh, sometimes there was some jitter. Now today I'm gonna to be testing this one and let's go for it. Are we able to get full HD video streaming? I've showed you the speed test. I'm well over 200 megabits per second. So it should be able to do HD streaming. Right. So I'll go to my own YouTube uh, videos just so that there's no copyright infringement if I am playing other people's videos. And most of my videos are in 4K. So let's have a look at one of these videos and see if we can do HD and then maybe HD with 50 frames per second and then 4K. Automatically, you can see where the quality is sitting at it. It's, it actually went by itself to the 4K at the 50 hertz. So that's a good sign. Now, I have seen this before. Sometimes it does it and sometimes it just goes to the 1080. I can already see that between YouTube and my web browser, they've already communicated with each other that the link is good. The process is called windowing where the sender and the receiver quickly determine the channel capacity before determining the rate of transfer. And you can already see that between YouTube and my web browser, they've already agreed that I could probably get 4k so that's a good sign so let's uh, not start on 4k let's just do the 1080p at 50 frames per second remember that the usual frames per second is 25 and uh, here i've got 50 so you've got to account for a double frame rate which means double information right let's have a look at that i've set it and let's press play and you can see, look how that's raced right ahead. So that is a very good sign. And I have been watching a few videos in the last week, and I can confirm that the YouTube streaming is significantly better on the premium rain package versus the standard rain package. As you can see, look at that. Um, that is far ahead from where we are, and this is 1080p. Now they said multiple streams. So let's see if we can get multiple HD videos playing at the same time. Right, so here we go. I'm pressing play here. This is set to HD, 50 frames per second. As you can see, there's no problem. Now I've got another web browser and there it's going. I'm pressing play. This is in HD. As you can see, 1080p. Look at that. It is way ahead of where I am. And then I've got another video there. Uh, there's also in HD, 1080p. And there it's just past where we are. So I've got three HD streams happening right now. And I can tell you they are not jittering. I've got them on my one web browser and I've got them on my other web browser. You can see that this is way ahead. Look, it has had time to cache, but even though the other video is playing, you can see that it is still caching and caching. So it's not like it's getting stuck. And what I can do is I can restart this video to make sure uh, that it's not, look at that. You see, it's already caching there. And let's just see the default 1080p. There we go. It's definitely able to do the multiple streams because look there, that is still above quite far away from where we currently are in watching this video. And then look, let's look at this one. Yeah, look at that. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relaunch all of these and see what happens. Right. Straight away, it's playing. As you can see, it's still in HD. Uh, there it is. It's cached past where we are. It's just cached there again. Let's see the other one. There we go. Uh, there, it's just cached past us. And let's go look at the original one. Look at that, it's cached past us. So to answer the question, are you able to get multiple HD streams? The answer is yes. Now I can say that quite affirmatively. Number one, I've got children in my house who are constantly gaming and watching YouTube. I also have someone who watches Netflix and I do not notice when they are watching YouTube and if I'm watching YouTube or doing Netflix. So I can honestly say that the multiple HD streams is a fair advertising point here, but just keeping in mind that I am achieving close to and more than that 200 megabit per second download rate. Now, if you do have the premium package and you're not getting the 200 megabits per second, then obviously that is not going to apply in your case. Right now, comparing it to the standard package where they say they give you a minimum of 30 megabits per second, I can say that the standard package definitely is much slower than the premium package. And you might just say, yes, that's obvious, but I can tell you that when I'm trying to stream a video, 
and somebody else who's streaming a video or using the network, I noticed that this uh, it does influence my experience of the network. Now, since I've done the premium package, I don't notice the other users and what they're doing on the network. So that is a significant improvement. Now, just showing you my signal strength, you can see that I've got five bars. So this is an example of a setup Right, so now I want to test uh, a higher setting. So let's put it at 1440 at 50 frames per second. Now, just keeping in mind, once again, that most videos are 25 frames per second. So this is actually double the frame rate of the usual video. And this is 1440. And as you can see, um, I'm going to maximize it here. And look at the cached amount there. You can see that it is ahead of where we currently are in the video. So it doesn't seem like there'll be any jitter at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to like skip ahead and let's see how quick it takes to get to that part of the video. Not too bad. Look at that. And it already cached uh, about, let's say, yeah, that's about 20 seconds ahead. And now I've hopped a bit later and look, it's already cached there. So that's a very good response. Look at that. Um, still 1440. And look at that. It's already at 845 and we're at 818. Don't think you're going to run into any jitter here. Now let's take it to the maximum that YouTube's got for me here. It's 2160 at 50 frames per second. So this is 4K at 50 frames per second. Now let's see how long it takes to get going. All right, so there we go. It's already caching ahead. And now we are streaming at 4K at 50 frames per second. And will we hit some jitter? Now I can say that it does hit jitter because I've obviously done this test and I've been using the the rain premium package for now uh, just over a week and yes unfortunately at some times you need to almost pause it to let it go ahead as you can see it's only marginally ahead of where we are so if i press play and let, let's go let's hop a little bit further and let's see how long it takes to adapt yeah okay very quickly but as you can see it's uh, ahead there so nobody else on my network is currently using the internet all the phones the wi-fi is off and uh, all the connections computers are all off so I can say that this is one single user. I'm the only person on this network. Now, now I have been using the premium package for about a week and it does jitter when it's on the 4K. But what I'm going to demonstrate now is multiple HD streams while you are watching a dedicated 4K stream. So that means one 4K stream plus multiple HD streams. Here we go. All right, so I'm launching this video. I'm going to put it at HD. There you see it's stuck on the HD. This is now going to be played, and I'm going to go back to my 4K video, and let's just see what is happening there. So now I'm going to go to another video, just in case you had just cached it into memory. Whoa, look at that, racing ahead. But we wanted at 4K, which is already at. All right, so here we go. I've got uh, the other video there, at 1080p streaming. Uh, you can see that uh, it is ahead. And now I've got this one. You can see there it's already hit the jitter. Look at that. Now we'll wait. Uh, it's now ahead. Uh, let's see what happens when we get to that place. The other video is playing fine. There's no problem. Uh, it, there's no jitter on the HD video. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the mouse over there and let's press play. And it's doing very good, I must say. All right, so I have a video here. It's on 4K, 50 frames per second. You can see that uh, it's not jittering. It's cached a bit ahead of where we are. You can see, look at that. It's ahead of where we are now. Now, don't forget, I have these videos also playing in HD right now. And you can see that it's well ahead of where the current viewer is. You can see that's 453, and this is cached up to 650. And looking at that one, uh, same story. And I've also got that one there. So you can see that there are three concurrent HD video streams and a 4K 50 frames per second video stream. And so far, I'm not having any jitter. So overall, this is very good. But now I can only tell you from the experience of the last week, this is not how it always is. Because at times, I do get the jitter on the 4K. It, uh, it takes time to cache. So although it's showing it that it's uh, wonderful right now, because you can see that it's ahead of where we are. Maybe it'll jitter. Let's just see. Let's just see. You can see that it's only a little bit ahead of us. It's just two or so seconds. Look at that. We're at 11, 12, 13, 14. 
And that's yeah, it's about five or so seconds ahead. It's not jittering right now, but I can say from experience that it does do it. So overall, in conclusion, yes, you can stream your 1080p. Yes, you can stream at 1080p 50 frames per second. Yes, the 1440 works great. Can you do the 4K? Well, in this video, it is showing it perfectly. But in the last week, I can say that at times you'll be in the middle of a video and then this will happen. So today when I'm doing the test, it's actually performing excellently because it is not jittering at all. So you can just go from my experience and I'll tell you that don't expect the 4K to always play without any freezing. Okay, to sum up, that was 4K being streamed at the same time as one, two, three videos all at HD. So overall, I can't complain about it. I can say that the performance was very good. Now, if you're wondering how I'm checking whether there's jitter or not while there is three or more uh, YouTube videos playing, well, here's my desktop setup. And you can see the video on the top left and the bottom right, those are both at HD. And the video in the middle, which is showing the piano hammers, that is 4K 50 frames per second. And you can see that none of them are freezing. So as you can see here, it is 4K 50 frames per second. This one here, Hey, that one's actually also at 4K. It was supposed to be at 1080. But anyway, I'll just leave it. And this one over here, this one is at 1080p. So you can see that none of these are having any jitter. You can see that they've all cached. So when I say there's no jitter, I mean I'm actually watching three screens and checking if there's any jitter. Now you can see it for yourself that there are three screens here and there's no jitter. But I'm not saying that you're going to get the same result. Now, what about download rates? So let's have a look at the download rates in terms of real user experiences. So here I'm at AMD's website and I wanna download a 441 meg file. So I'm gonna download it and let's have a look at that download rate. You can see there 1.6, 1.5, now, interestingly, this is a similar download rate that I was getting on the lower package, the home standard package. So it seems like the streaming is excellent, but the downloading is not, in my experience, not that much better than the home standard option. As you can see there, it's 1.6, 1.5, and that's the same or similar rate that I was getting when I was on the home standard. So when I upgraded to the home premium, I definitely got an improvement in the streaming, but in terms of straight downloads, well, I, not yet. I haven't noticed a massive improvement like I have with the streaming. So that's obviously got to do with how they've configured their uh, RAIN network. So here it is downloading at 1.6 megabytes per second. If you compare that to the download rates, which I've got on the speed test, you can see this is 192 megabits per second. So there's a difference. Remember, this is megabits per second, while the download of uh, your software, for example, is megabytes per second, but even if you divide by eight, you'll see that the download rate is significantly slower than what the speed test download rate is. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing that there might be some throttling here in terms of downloading of content, while streaming, I think, is open, while the downloading seems to be throttled at some point here. For example, if you want to do the conversion, you can see that 200 megabit per second, if you convert that to download rates of your data, 25 megabytes per second. Remember, there are eight bits in a byte. So 25 should be what my download rate is. And if I have a look here, you can see that it definitely ain't 25. Now, the question is, maybe AMD server throttles the download. So let's download from another server. Right, so let's try a different server. Let's try Microsoft. So now I've logged into a OneDrive and I've got a, a big folder here called Photo Gallery and I'm going to download it and see how long it's going to take. There you can see it's a 59 gig folder and let's see. Right, let's look at the download rate. There you can see it's higher, 1.8, 1.7, but still nowhere near the 25 where it should be. Now look at that one, it's actually going lower. Right, so what has happened there is it started downloading quite quick, then it slowed down a bit, and now it's still at that 1.1 megabytes per second. So what is the moral of the story here? It seems like that if you're downloading files, 
there seems to be some throttling at play here because I know for a fact that when you download from OneDrive, if you've got a very fast broadband connection, you can download much quicker than 1.2 megabytes per second. So this seems to be more about rain rather than whether I was on Microsoft or AMD's website. Seems like there is definitely some throttling going on here in terms of downloading of files. Right, so here while on the advertising, it says average network download speeds over 200 megabytes megabits per second. This is a little bit of a problem for me because yes, when I do the speed test, I'm getting 192, but that should translate to my download also being uh, in that range of what, 25 megabytes per second. Now I'm going to use a different browser and I'm going to download this uh, file close to a gig. Uh, there you can see 962 megabytes and I'm going to download it and you can see there that is not the speed or the download rate that I should be getting on a 200 megabits per second line. As you can see, look at that. That should be much faster. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download this file again, 962. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to time it. So I'm going to start this and quickly start this. Right, so you can see it says 11 minutes left and you can see the download rate has reduced a bit. And just to show you where we are on the clock, it's four minutes and 22 seconds. So there's no point carrying on that test because you can already see that a 962 megabyte file should have been downloaded in 40 seconds. So that's just proof that definitely the downloading is throttled in my opinion but it should have been downloaded in 40 seconds remember 962 megabyte file at 200 megabit per second download rate 40 seconds however it is closer to this rate if you have a look there it'll probably have downloaded within the 13 minutes or thereabout so that is closer to that data rate 10 megabits per second therefore although my speed test is 192 281 i'm not getting that when it comes to the downloading of a file right now i'm just going to show you some other speed tests this is testmy.net so on testmy.net uh, you can see i'm not getting a very good result here so i'll show you another test there's 135 You can see the result is 78. And if I go back to the UCLA test, you can see that already it is considerably higher than the testmy.net. Because look here, you're already at over 230 to look at that. That's really racing. I mean, that's probably the best test I've ever done. All right, so I've never had such a fast test on the UCLA. But if you look here at testmy.net, 78. And if I go to speed of me, Uh, so look at that. So I had a maximum of 147 using the speed of me test. Currently at 62. The UCLA, this is the best I've ever had, 304. But as you've seen the earlier test, they're around about 200 to somewhere there. And this testmy.net tends to be a bit lower. It tends to be around the 100 megabits per second mark. Okay, so moving on. What about torrents? Okay, so now I've loaded up a torrent. As you can see, it's one point, uh, call it 1.5 gigs. The health is good. The seed to leash ratio is, is fair. And there you can see the download rate isn't bad. It's 3.3, but it's still definitely not the 200 megabit per second, the 25 megabyte per second. So definitely uh, lower than what I should be getting. Do they clamp you after a certain amount of downloads? That I don't know. I have not downloaded a lot of torrents, so I can't comment. I can just say that I'm currently downloading a torrent. There it's climbed to four megabytes per second. So actually much faster than the regular downloading. It's almost like I must download torrents if I want to download software. So this seems to be better than the standard option, the Rain 5G home standard option, because on the standard option, I never got as high as this when it came to downloading torrents. 
in closing, is there a significant difference between the 5G standard and the 5G premium? When it comes to streaming, yes, there is a significant difference. It is definitely much better. When it comes to downloading software from websites, I didn't see such an improvement at all. When it came to the torrents, yes, the 5G premium is better. When it comes to uploading, I can't comment yet. I'll have to do another video. I do a lot of uploading. Once I've done uploading for about a week, I will then comment about that. Remember that speed test alone is insufficient in determining whether your line is good. See here, I've got now another result, 140. Here, I've got 304. Here, I've got uh, 62. And these things tend to be transient. So the question is, what is the experience of the product? I can say that coming from Telcom with their 4G option, the rain is definitely better. So if you're someone who does a lot of streaming and there's a lot of people in your household or in your business who are doing streaming, then definitely got to go for the 5G premium. If you're not someone who's got multiple streaming or you don't mind having it on pause for a few seconds to cache the file for a bit, then the 5G standard works fine. Just keeping in mind that my signal strength on my 5G router is good. These recommendations are making a relative to a 5G router that was set up correctly with a good signal strength. Thanks for watching and cheers.